The Small Business Show, episode 372 for Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. Folks, and welcome here to the Small Business Show at businessshow.co, where we are small businessing together, all of us, not just me and that guy, but you and me and that guy. We're all doing this together, small businessing every single week. Sponsors for this episode include Rate Tracker from SkySale at sky sale.com slash rate tracker. And HunterDouglas.com slash SBS, where you can go to get your free Style Get Smarter design guide. You can get all those links. Of course, if you remember them, that's great. If you don't, visit our show notes at businessshow.co, and then you can just click them from there. It's great. Or subscribe to our mailing list, and then you get not just the sponsor links in your email, but you get all the links of all the things we talk about in the episode delivered to you, and a reminder that the episode is up. It's a great way to do it. We'll talk more about those sponsors in depth in a few minutes here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm doing well. I'm, uh, you know, shaking through. Crazy days, but I I, I like that. I, I Productive yeah, days. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing worse than not having something to, or thinking there's, well, what do I, what should I work on? There's nothing, you know what I mean? I love being driven by the projects. Yes. Uh, and things that are going on and creating, you know, uh, your task sheet and what's going on, looking at your two did list at the end of the, uh, at the end of the day, seeing everything got that you knocked out. I we we now. talk a lot about that here on the show as sort of a, like as a given, if you will, right? Like, you, you know, you have to, you have your two did list, you have your things, you, you know that you need to figure out what you're going to do. I, I've always done that because I'm petrified of needing to go get a job. Like, like oh, it, per, it, it's pat, I, unemployable day. I am unemployable. Right. It, it's not, <laughs> it's not about you. It's about me. Right. Like yeah. I, I, for people who are employable, it's fantastic. And to oh, be yeah. fair, everybody that I've, you know, I had, I worked for Citibank and GE Capital and Deloitte and Touche, like big name companies. And they all loved me. I hated working for all those places. Uh, not the people, but just the the bureaucracy of it. Uh, I, I I just can't do it. So I am driven to ensure that I have. I like it's just a part of me now. And it didn't really dawn on me how important that was and how active I actually was about creating my own task lists and creating things to do that furthered essentially my mission of not having to go get a job. That really is what fueled me, especially in the early years. And when I say early years, I mean, you know, up until maybe 18 months ago with, uh, with my various businesses at, you know, at, at different degrees at different times, it didn't hit me until probably three years ago. I, I was involved in what turned out to be a, a fiery dumpster fire disaster <laughs> of a business partnership. And uh, it came home to roost that, or it began to come home to roost. The lawsuit followed on, but uh, came home to roost. And one day when I was on the phone with one of my business partners who had been a silent partner and then decided they wanted to be like the leader and CEO of this business, which was fine. I had no interest in being the leader and CEO of this business, although other people were convincing me to be. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and this person was doing a terrible job at at being a leader and and CEO. And so I, I you know, got my partner on the phone. I had several partners, but I got this particular partner on the phone and said to them, like, you know, it it it's not working out. You know, you, you you're not doing the things that are the right things to be to be doing as a as a leader. And they said to me, well, you can't fault me for this because no one told me what to do. That's and an employee mentality. That was an employee mentality. Right. And it, it just didn't, it never dawned on me that, that this is how a problem might manifest itself until I heard that statement. And it, and it was just a very difficult phone call to make. Like, I do not like telling people that they are effectively, I didn't say the word incompetent, but I know that's how it comes across. Like I, I'm, I'm aware of, of how difficult a message this is to hear 
And therefore, because I, I, I actually am far more empathic than you, you folks might think. I, I sort of have to work really hard not to buy into it because otherwise I, I would just be frozen and paralyzed all day. Uh, but I know how difficult it was. And it was a super difficult phone call to make for all those reasons. And, uh, and when they said that, it was like, oh, well, then this was I absolutely did the right thing making this phone call. Like it was it instantly justified everything. It was like, right. If you don't understand that as the leader, you, you, you are the one that decides what you and the rest of us are going to do right. and then executes on those things. And if your execution or the decisions are wrong, then the company suffers. It's just how it be. Like the, the, yeah. the buck stops with you. Well, there, I think lots of people are, uh, fall in love with titles. That's what happened without here. In retrospect, I realize that's what happened here. Right. Yeah. yeah without understanding. And, and they want to make it part of their story. I'm the CEO, I'm the pre whatever, I'm the president, this kind of thing. Um, and I, I had a partnership go sideways because a, a partner who thought their title was, uh, was kind of a, uh, it was just a negative connotation to them when we suggested, here's your title, you do this. And they said, well, I'm an owner and I want to, I want people to know. I said, well, okay, you can tell them, but we do need a, uh, a chief technology officer. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And right. that's your, it's in your wheelhouse, but yeah, you, it's, it's, uh, it's, that's an employee mentality. It's funny that that was actually the, in that particular business venture that died a fiery death, uh, that was my title in that. And I was happy with that title. I didn't need anyone to know that I had any ownership in the project at all, other than when, you know, we sold the business, which never happened. Yeah. You just yeah. want to let your bank know. Yeah. I want to let my bank know. The business. That's right. Nobody yeah, exactly. else is irrelevant. Everyone else was irrelevant. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. I want to make sure the people writing the checks at that one moment in time are aware yeah. of where the, the, to distribute the proceeds. That's but the that's only time again, it matters. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and it and it is that we we've mentioned it here. It's that uh, do you have a an e mentality or an er mentality? Employee, employee or employer. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, it, it's just so true. Even now, people are like, oh, well, you know, what do you, what do you do? What's what was your career? And it's like, I just you know, I own a bunch of businesses. It's not like you go into a, a laundry list of, well, I own this company, do this. Oh. No, you know, and if you need to do that, uh, I think it's a, it's a problem. You, you're yeah. falling in love with the- uh, Falling in love with titles. titles. That's it. Yeah. I, I, I certainly fell victim to that early on and thankfully what? for a short period yeah. of time, it, you know, in the beginning of a few of our businesses. But I remember the day that I was signing a contract. It was just a, an ad contract at, at Backbeat, you know, which we do- well, as often as we can, right? Like that's our, that's a, the bread and butter of our business is, is, you know, selling ads. And so yeah. I had, you know, I had to sign a contract that was doing a PDF signature, whatever, like you do. And, and this was, you know, 15 years ago, maybe more. And there was a line for title on there. And I had always put, you know, president or CEO or whatever it was. And this one day it kind of stopped me. I'm like, why do I want people to know I'm the president or CEO or owner? <laughs> I don't actually, that, Good that, point. that might be bad. And so I, I wrote director of operations and oh, I like that. Right. And it was like, yeah. it's perfectly vague. It's, it's not misleading. I, I certainly at the time was director of operations in, in addition or as a byproduct of being CEO, <laughs> like, but you know, it, and, and now all I do is I put publisher on there. That's it. Oh, I like that too. Yeah. That's good. It, it, it's, it's far less informative and yeah. you know, and people, people that do business with us know very quickly how, what the corporate structure is and who the players are and all that stuff. And they know that I'm the owner of the business and it's fine. I don't like, I, I don't, I like yeah, I, I'm not against people knowing, but I don't, I'm not that like, your comment. I like this. Beware falling in love with titles. Yeah. I mean, I've fallen have, in love with the publisher title because it's super convenient. Well, I like that too. I, I use I use the word founder because oh, there you to go. me, it's yeah. I'm I've, I'm the found I'm a founder. You are, but it doesn't mean I run the business. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I'm the president. Doesn't mean I make all the decisions. I may, you know, uh, I'm gonna go find the people <laughs> to to yeah. build this thing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So somebody told me years ago about titles, and and I don't know how relevant it is to this conversation, but I, maybe a little bit. It was. You should always pick a title that impresses people, but you should never be impressed by titles. 
Ah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Because it kind of like you're on the other side of the velvet rope here. It doesn't mean, you know, it's just like what you get done. And uh, yeah, the buck stops with you no matter what you call yourself. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That's it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And since it stops with you, you know, we always talk about systems here on the show, how to be successful, you know, and create systems. And, And a key part of creating a system of success, in my opinion, is all about delegating. And I'd love to talk about it today on the show. I have, a, uh, as you can imagine, uh, a lot of things to say about mistakes I've made in this uh, area and things I've learned. And uh, I No, I, I'd like to talk about it too. I, 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 I love having employees because it allows me to grow what we can do with the business. Hmm. Yeah, that's and, nice. I hate having employees because <laughs> I have to manage them. And I, I like, I, I have, yeah. I have been super, super fortunate to cherry pick some fantastic employees. And and if they're not fantastic, they don't stay <laughs> because yeah. I can't deal with it. I'm, I'm ter- I'm a terrible delegator. I'm definitely going to learn the most from this episode. Uh, but I understand the value of not having to do all the work myself because there's only so many hours in the day. And quite frankly, I'm not good at everything. In fact, I'm only good at a few things. Uh, managing people is not one of them, but I'm getting better at that because it's a, a necessity of uh, as a byproduct of not wanting to go work for someone else. But yeah, I'm looking forward sure. to this conversation. Yeah. That should be interesting. It should. Uh, and I want to have it. The next thing that I would like to do, though, is I want to talk about our two sponsors for this episode, if that's all right with you, Mr. Gene. Yeah, let's do it, man. All right. First up is Rate Tracker, presented by SkySail Solutions, your trusted payments partner. Listen, we've talked about it on the show here before, right? Payment processing is confusing as it is. And that's intentional because a lot of these companies out there want to hide things like the rates and the fees associated with accepting credit card payments as payment. What if there was a free solution that allowed you to easily and automatically understand your bottom line credit card processing rates and fees every month? Well, Rate Tracker is a free and simple way for you as as a person out there who's small businessing every day to know your costs, to accept payments so you don't get lied to or taken advantage of by your payment processor. You can tell why we were super happy to Take on Rate Tracker as a sponsor here, right? This sort of fits with what we do here. In fact, exactly fits. Too many times payment processors have intentionally left merchants in the dark. And as a responsible business owner, Rate Tracker is your tool to level the playing field. Take back your hard earned money. Rate Tracker makes it super simple for you to understand your costs, to accept payments, and provides you with free access to trusted payment experts like SkySale Solutions that can give you free advice on how to optimize your payment acceptance program. Visit sky-sale.com slash rate tracker to sign up for the only service that's dedicated to helping you know your numbers, keep track of your payment processing costs, and alert you immediately if there's ever a rate increase. You've got to go check this out. Again, it's sky-sale.com slash rate tracker, or you can just click the link in the show notes at businessshow.co. Our thanks to Rate Tracker presented by Sky Sale Solutions here for sponsoring this episode. Who doesn't love to live well, to be perfectly at ease, in comfort, and in style? Hunter Douglas can help you do just that with their innovative window shade designs, gorgeous fabrics, and control systems so advanced they can be scheduled to automatically adjust to their optimal position throughout the day. You got to go check this out, right? You're going to go to HunterDouglas.com slash SBS and you get to see the way the shades diffuse harsh sunlight to cast this glow across your room. You get to see how you can enjoy the view outside the window while protecting your privacy inside. And they'll also let you learn about the superior insulation that their shades provide, keeping you warmer in the winter, cooler in the summer, lowering utility bills. These are things you're going to want to know about. And then, because you're listening to podcasts, you understand 
tech stuff. You want to tap into Hunter Douglas's power view technology, and that way you can set your shades to automatically reposition for the perfect balance of light, privacy, and insulation morning, noon, and night. I am super stoked to uh, be able to check these things out soon here, and, and we will report back when we do. You can live beautifully with Hunter Douglas, enjoying greater convenience, enhanced style, and increased comfort in your home throughout the day. To do that, visit HunterDouglas.com slash SBS today for your free style. I'll get smarter design guide with fresh takes, creative ideas, and smart solutions for dressing your windows. That's hunterdouglas.com slash SBS for your free design guide. And our thanks to Hunter Douglas for sponsoring this episode. Shannon Jean, you are my only hope. Uh, (laughs) You're going to teach me how best to delegate. And hopefully those of you listening this, some of this is going to rub off too. really what Shannon's going to do is teach you how to delegate. And I'm hoping that some of it, rubs off on me. I'll share some of my, well, my failures yeah, as we, yeah, yeah, as we sure. step through I, this. I, I don't claim to be a fantastic delegator, but uh, I looking back, as I did some research for this story, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that I've learned over the years, uh, and I, and I want to talk about them. Um, because, you know, y- you can't do it all, right? You no, I know that. that. Yeah, I've learned yeah. that lesson. Right. Yeah, you don't want that superhero complex like the entire company revolves around me and everything has to go through me and and you know you will click uh, quickly become the logjam uh and slow down, you know, growth of your of your business and everybody will resent you for it and it's not the way you want to run your business. No. And you know, we talk about the E-Myth uh, book all the time, and you should definitely read that. And one of the things that we we love about the E-Myth is in the beginning you create this org chart for your company and you're putting, you know, boxes for all these different roles. And, and, you know, you may put your own name in every single role, right? And that's just the way, and that's fine. Sure. Because it's helping to identify everything you do, but you then have to just keep constantly as you start to bring people in, grow your team. How do I start replacing myself? How do I delegate this? Who can take this over? Um, And I I I think I I want to stop you right there. That asking that question how do I replace myself? That's a mindset that's scary. It's super scary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. trust me when I say you want to adopt this. Look, we held on to Mac Observer for 23 years, right? Wow. And and when we sold it, it was at a point where, for the most part, we had replaced ourselves, at least in terms of the daily, like what it took to produce the site. And 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 so when you know when a buyer approached us. We were like, wait, 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 we can do this. It's, it's ready. Uh, you know, we weren't ready, but we got ourselves there very quickly. But yeah, asking that question, that's huge. Yeah, Yeah. it is. And one of the first things on my list to talk about delegating as kind of a part of a system for success is delegating helps you to think like a boss. And, you know, that's kind of a funny comment. People say, you know, this kind of stuff, but it's really a meaningful shift of how you frame uh, and how you view yourself, how, how, what's the framework for w- looking at yourself. And by learning to delegate, especially if you can do it on a small scale to begin with, it helps you in so many different aspects of leadership and management. You know, you learn to trust people more. Sure. You learn to hire better because you know you're going to give them these tasks. You got to talk about it more. Um, it, it allows you, it teaches you how to identify strengths and weaknesses. In, in the people around you. I mean, and much, much more. We could do a whole show on this, this how you think about it. But yeah. yeah. Thinking like a boss is just, you know, in a good way. You're going to have to delegate. That's just part of your growth. That's just part of the system. And as you start to do, you know, uh, you uh, whoever your first employee is, if you're just getting started or if you've got tons of employees already, you just have to give it up. And, and one of the things you're going to hear me talk about over and over on this show is that to really gain power and to build wealth, you have to give up control. And oh, that's man. a hard thing. Wait, for what? All of us. No, dude. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Look, I'm out. Like, listen, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Shannon Jean's going to finish the episode here. I can't be a part yeah. of it. All. No, <laughs> no, but it's you're not right. Just you're right. Creating wealth for yourself. It's your employees too, right? You want to, that's you fair. That's a good way this, to look at it. Yeah. This company, not, 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 not just enrich yourself, enriching everyone around you. And you want to get more powerful. You, you need to give it up, give up control. You know, I always used to joke around, you know, the people that are really powerful, they don't carry a phone with them. 
they don't, they don't, they're not attached to it. They don't have to be checking things all the time because yeah. they've, they've given up and it works and their system is working and they can check in on it from time to time. And, no, and I, it, and, it's true. I, like the most success that I've had with this is starting a business with out ever controlling anything. I mean, oh, maybe I'm in control, like, like at the end of the day, I'm one of the powers that be right. But never once being in charge of making sure something gets done uh, or, or responsible yeah. as the primary at the end of the day, the buck stops, you know, with the owners. So we're always responsible for getting things done, but not being the one on point for doing anything if you can do that and that like very rarely are you able to do that with your first business, but right. Y- right. You know, but Getting I, I was, those opportunities is, is correct. Great. But yeah. I, you know, I'm thinking about a business. I, there's this one business that I mentioned on this show and I'm cagey about uh, for a variety of reasons. Hopefully later this year, I can explain why I'm cagey about it. it. It has nothing to do with the business. It has to do with the wishes of my, my business partners really. And I'm happy to honor yep. them. It's totally fine. Uh, but but that business was started in a way that allowed me to be part of the ownership structure and not part of most of the day-to-day stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're not a managing partner. I actually, I'm a managing partner. We we are involved in the management of it, but not in the mm. running of day-to-day it. Day-to-day operations. Yeah. The day-to-day okay. operations. Yeah, yeah exactly. Good. Yeah. 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 And yeah. you know, as you, as you look back and as I look back on starting my first company, you know, I never thought, you, oh, I'm going to get this and I'm going to st- start another business and do this. I mean, I was just struggling to get my first business off the ground and everything. Sure. But yeah, of course. As you, you know, bring people on and you become more comfortable with giving up control and and giving more responsibility to people, it opens, again, I come back to this framework in your head of, oh, wow, you know, I could, this business is doing its thing. I, I don't have to be involved every second. And so- if I delegate more, may I can go do try something else and and learn from that and do different things. And looking back, it's much easier to look back than forward. That made a big difference in in my life and in my career and, and my story, which I'd love to talk about here every week. Right. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing it does it, it, by delegating, it it allows you to take back your time. You know, you need time to work on your business and not just in your business, right? It, when you start delegating, you, you recapture that time to guide your company, guide your team, walk around, connect with people on another level because you're not, you know, dealing with every bit of minutia and responding to every, quote, emergency or putting out every fire. You get that, and, and it's a luxury. And if you think about it as a luxury that you're gaining back for yourself, I guarantee you'll learn how to delegate more. Okay, so this is, I'm pausing because you're you are causing my mind to, to grind here. We talk about brain hacks on this show all the time. And you just laid out perhaps the most important one ever. And that is training yourself that not having a job to do is a luxury. Absolutely. Oh, no, your you're right is, about is, it. Is, yeah, oh, your time is the yeah. most valuable thing, right? You right. never get it back. But that's uh, the right way for us control freaks. Or it, one of the right ways. I don't want to say it's the only right way. But that is a way for us control freaks to wrap our heads around the 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 story we want to tell. I like this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It All works. Right. It, if you can do it, it's not, no, it's easy. not easy. Well, maybe it's easy for some of our listeners and we'd love to hear your hacks and, and tips for feedback uh, at business show.com. Delegating. Yeah. yeah. Come, come tell us. Um, but those two things are related to what delegating does for you. Yes. It allows you to learn how to think like a boss. It allows you to learn the luxury of taking your time back and, and quote, not having something to do so you can think about your business, so you can walk around and talk to people and ask them what they're working on, so you can cook lunch and barbecue for them on Fridays because you're not running around like crazy. And, it, and it, it, it also gives you an air of control. Even if, everything, if, or even if everything is going to hell in the background, you being calm and walking around and having the time to take a breath 
helps your company tremendously because you're the you're the rock. You have to be the rock when when bad somebody has somebody has to. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You and you probably already know that as a as a business yeah, owner. Of course, like when of course. when the emergency happens and everybody is freaking out. You know, they find out about the problem before you do, right. or or even if you find out about it. You know, whatever. Uh, you know, everybody's freaking out. Most business owners who I I know and have talked to are the first ones to say, all right, look, let, let's just breathe. We're going to figure this out. We're going to get through it. It's fine. You, you know, and and then you get through it. And my, I'm guessing that's true. Of most people here listening to this show already. I would you, think so. You've already yeah. been there at least once yep. and perhaps it's been once today. Right. Like it's how it goes. <laughs> that's right. Right. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, it, because and that's why you're able to do this is because. You get, you, you know, you, 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 it's not your first rodeo with it. And well, it, we, we just, well, we did that episode on the, the, uh, having a problem solving mentality. Yeah, exactly. That's part of it, right? That's part of it. Correct. And, and so, and if you are listening to this and haven't started your first business yet, uh, you will get there. These things will happen, but they probably already happened in your personal life or even in your business life as an employee. And you've been the one to be like, okay, we can get through this. It's fine. And that's that problem solving men mentality. Exactly. Yeah. And, right. and yeah. And just being the voice of calm. I don't want to say the voice of reason. It's not that people who are, are upset about whatever's going on are unreasonable. That's, that's the wrong way to look at it, but you have to be that rock. Like, yeah, we're going to get through this. Yeah. We're, we're going to right. figure it out. Let's breathe. You know, when I, I'm often reminded of what pilots are trained to do. And when you have a problem with your plane, uh, the first thing you do is nothing. Mm, I like that. Well, any action you take could be irreversible. So you have altitude, presuming you have altitude. If you don't have altitude, you are trained to do different things. But, you know, you've got a little bit of altitude. Altitude buys you opportunity. Okay, great. There's a problem. The engine is out. And, okay, do we try to restart it? What are the things that we can try to do here and let's think through them. Let's take 30 seconds. Look through all of the problems, okay, before we even take one step. You know, is fuel pouring out the back of the airplane or the side of the airplane, whatever? If that's the case, maybe attempting to restart the engine is not the best, uh, you know, first thing to try. Mm. You know? I, that, I like that. That's, right? that's a powerful statement. It's the first thing you should do is nothing. Is nothing. <laughs> Right. No, when I learned that about pilots and I'd been through, you know, a few things in my business life or whatever. And it was when I learned that it was like, oh, right. This is great advice for a lot of places, but oh, definitely up problem in the solving. Area. Yes. For, for problem solving. What's the first step? Do nothing. Do nothing. <laughs> Don't Just think. Stop. Right. Stop. <laughs> breathe. Get yourself into a mindset where you can think and then yeah. think. And of course, pilots are trained to not really have to think they, you know, they, there's, there, there's a lot of common problems that could happen. And, and so you're just taught, okay, if this is the problem, here are the steps you go through. If this is the problem, here are the steps. And you know, you, you might not have that playbook in front of you for your business. So the first thing you do is nothing. You just yeah. breathe. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So think like a boss, take back your time. Those are things that impact you. Next couple of things I want to discuss are, the benefits of delegating to the people around you, right? Okay. Uh, the first is it builds trust with your team, right? When you delegate tasks to your employees or maybe they're consultants, contractors, partners, you're showing them that you trust them and, you know, that they can handle the respect. You believe that they can handle those responsibilities of whatever task you're talking about. Right. And you'll see, and even if you start small, your people are going to perform better when you give the, when you I'm sorry when they know you trust them they want that responsibility they want that autonomy at least the people that are going to really help you grow your right. company over time. right right um they they want that so building trust and and everybody's will watch you do this right not just the people you're delegating to but you know giving up that control it 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 builds part of your culture of of uh, you know of your business the other thing it's really important and we've talked about it a lot on the show, is it delegating helps you develop people around you, you know, professionally, right? When, when I used to walk around the office, one of my favorite questions to ask all the time was, well, what job do you want next? What do you want to do next? And, you know, people, 
especially new hires, they look at me like, what, am I, am I going to lose my job? It's like, no, but aren't you going to get bored doing the same thing in a couple of years or whatever? And yeah. what do you want to do next? And how do you want the manager's job? Because I would like him to go do something else. Maybe we're going to start another company. Maybe somebody should take my job because, you know, I'm not the best person to be here anymore. Um, so you need to be constantly training your people, right, for future opportunities. And when you delegate them and start giving them those responsibilities, they build new skills, they add to their talent stack. And as you, de as you delegate, the people, they'll learn more, be more comfortable taking on bigger and bigger challenges, right? They'll be excited about them because they know you, you know, they know how to do it. Um, wait, okay, I'll, wait, I'll wait, this is, this is interesting because as someone who has always run small companies, you know, maximum 10 employees, well, I guess at Computer Nerds, we had closer to 30, but, uh, but for the most part, the businesses that I've run are single digit, you know, employees. Okay. And there is fear and in me as the business owner, I don't want to say a generic business owner. I will say for me in asking people, what job do you want next? Because there may not be other jobs here, right? Like currently, sure. like there, 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 there isn't right currently, but as you're saying this, and as I'm in the right mindset to sort of process it, I'm realizing, wait, why not let the people that work for me define a new job that would be theirs Next, because yes. if they yes. can convince me like they're going to they but not they're going to they do see things differently than I do. Of course they do. They like they're, they're different people. Number one. But number two, they're in a, literally in a different position in the company. Right. So they're going to see things that I don't and see holes that I don't and see opportunities that I don't. Now, I may not agree with their opportunities. If somebody says, well, you know, the, ne the next thing that I want to do is be the person that sits around and thinks about uh, great recipes right, right. all day. Yeah. Like, OK, well, that I don't see how that fits in our company. So try to convince me or let's move on. But giving them the opportunity to define a new role for themselves next, that's like – there's a little bit, it's a little bit scary only because it's the unknown, but otherwise, like, what's the problem yeah, with that? And, and you can identify, like, I would ask this question, the guys in the warehouse, and they were kind of entry level positions. And sure. I often felt compelled to go out and tell them how important their role was because they were the last point of contact that the customer would have. Sure. Because they were packaging things and all this kind of stuff. So I, I really wanted them to get that mindset and how important the packaging was and the labeling and all this. I'm kind of a nut about packaging. But I noticed one guy was just a great artist, you know, and and he was doing some, you know, amazing stuff. And I could see it in his, you know, workstation and all this kind of stuff. And then he painted like the back of a computer, a laptop and a, a case that we had laying around. I was like, dude, that's incredible. You know, why don't we start a business? Don't you want to be a shipping clerk, you know, for the rest of your life <laughs> and, uh, or you want to be an artist, you know? And so trying to identify different skills, you don't, you just don't know. You don't know what people know and nope. you really don't know what they want to do because they're not honest with you until they trust you. So as you, give them and empower them through like delegating and, and you creating this culture around you, you'd be amazed at the opportunities back to your point. You really nailed it. The opportunities that people will present to you if you pay a little attention to them. Right. Right. Yeah. That's and the key. You, you, yeah. Pay a little attention. You can't, yeah. Yeah. And you can't do it if you don't have any time, if you're just running around, all this kind of stuff. So delegating, you know, really poor. And a, a, a quick story, you know, we had, a massive project that hit us, um, you know, after, and, and I had people working for me 13, 14, 15 years. Sure. And this massive project that hit us, I could just see their skill set and their talent stack of how they just jumped in. I wasn't even here. I was in Hawaii on vacation when this opportunity came up. Wow. And I can remember jumping on the phone and talking to, you know, th this team. Okay, can you guys, how do we do this? I do that. I didn't even know where we were going to put all this stuff. And, there, you know, and the message I got was, hey, enjoy your vacation. We're going to figure it out. You brought the deal. You managed the finances of everything. We'll just get it here. Let us, we'll yeah, let us get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Those people, those, you know, part of our team, they could never have done that had they not had the power over time and learned and taken on these different challenges, um, that, that's how well, you that, that's develop the, their 
Yeah, that's leaders. the people that feel like they have some autonomy, to your point before. Yeah. Like, it, you couldn't have started their autonomy on, yes. you know, that moment of that, that day. day you keep, yes. No. <laughs> Exactly. It no. doesn't work. They, oh, they'd they're be like, like what? Headlights. wait, what? You know, you're not <laughs> here. You and you're, back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they, you'd come back and there would be nobody left. Yep. And I've seen it. You know, oh, that, yeah, that's, that's the power of, of delegating that kind of stuff, you know, and there's people way, way better at it than I am that build huge, huge companies that just give up. They give up control. You said something on last week's show when we recorded about delegating to, uh, to do things you don't know how to do. A little bit. Oh, now, yeah. I, Wait. I, I, yeah. And I have a hard time. That's why Backbeat you know, Media was able to get started, to be perfectly honest. Awesome. I was super inexperienced at being a business owner. Uh, I, 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 you know, I was plowing forward with things. I was a massive control freak. Uh, I I did not. I, I mean, if I, I certainly don't know how to delegate today. I knew a whole lot less about it back then. But I knew that I was bad at sales. And... Yeah. And so I had hired someone and gave them autonomy to just get it done. And then that person actually became one of my business partners with, with backbeat. That was Greg. And, uh, and, and, you know, I, I didn't try to micromanage him because I had no idea how to do that. I, I was not, that was not my thing. I was like, you know, Good this, yeah. so you go do it. Yeah. And I had to trust him because I had to trust someone and he was the one I chose to trust, you know, it's just how it was. Yeah. It was and not my I, idea I, to hire him, by the way. It was somebody else. I was having lunch with a fellow business owner who had dramatic. much more experience yeah. with delegating than me. And he's like, you should hire Greg. He's like, that would be perfect for your business and do this. I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Listen to other people. Yeah. 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 I can remember we had Brian O'Connor. I don't remember his company name on the show a couple of years ago. And, you know, his he was going in an advisory group and they said, oh, you need to hire a CFO. And he kept putting it, putting it, putting it off. And they said, don't come back to this meeting. It, don't come to the yeah, next meeting come if you back. haven't hired a CFO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he had delegate. He had to give up to to get somewhere far beyond. I can tell you today he's far beyond where he was then. Far far beyond. Um, but that, yeah, that's yeah. one of those things that's like, and that's so huge. If, yeah. Yeah. If you need help delegating, I would suggest that delegating to things you don't know how to do is a great lesson to start or, or a great way to start delegating. Yeah. Right. Because- you have no choice, right? You got to hire a sales guy. You need to hire a graphic designer. Yeah. Just think of that. Oh, I'm delegating these people. Um, you want to get the work to the most effective person. If they work for you or if they work, you know, you're hiring and whatever. Yeah, hiring, contractor, contractor or whatever. whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, not knowing how to do something can be a big That's benefit. That's powerful. On, no, that, in fact, yeah. that, like I would say it, 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 it took, I would love to say it to all of you, but who I'm really saying it to is my younger self. Find the things that you don't know how to do and like make that the first person you hire because it will train you how to delegate to to people in general. And, and you're going to be more comfortable doing it with someone that can do something that you cannot do or certainly can't do well. Uh, it's going to be way easier. And then you learn the value of delegation. Right. Yeah. This is the quote that got me on this delegating topic. That All right. I, I shared with you last week. It, and the quote is, it's not important that you have the answer. It's important that you know where to find the answer. And that Mark King, uh, president of Adidas, is a guy that really great. Uh, there's a podcast called From the Top that you listen to. And okay. he's, also, he's the president of Taco Bell right now. Oh. A really crazy experience that not a, a school educated guy, but a street smart kind of guy. Sure. And and that's this kind of thing. You, you don't have to have the answer, but you need to figure out how to get it and, and or find someone that can get it, yeah. get it for you. You know, so uh, I'll just leave you with this. You know, there's no growth without delegating. You know, you're going to be stuck. Your business is going to be stuck. Uh, you need to surround yourself with capable people that want to do, want to learn, uh, delegate your business to them. You know, you're going to create this kind of cyclical system of success that's going to evolve and grow as your business does. And, you know, I really believe that if you embrace this concept that to truly gain power and to create wealth for you and your employees, you have to give up control. And I think yeah, you have to. Oh, no, it's yeah. it's the way to go. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. we'll put a few, I've got a couple of links that we'll put in the show notes. You do, you don't want to miss those. Uh, if you don't subscribe to our newsletter, you definitely should. I don't know what that link is, Dave. Yeah, just go to businessshow.co and subscribe right there. In fact, it, it, all you have to do is go to businessshow.co and wait a, a, a nine second pause. That's what I have it go. set to. And boom, you will get a, a little yeah. form that will let you subscribe. So, yeah, because we give you all those notes. I have some more reading if you want some help with, you know, learning how to delegate better and stuff. But yeah. And, and, and if you think I got something wrong or you'd like uh, to share a tip, biz, uh, feedback at businessshow.co, we would love to hear from you. This has been great, man. Thank you. Uh, this has been a master class in delegation. I know you you say you're not an expert. You're a student of it. That, I, I love that. That's great. I'll, I'll, I'll let you continue to hold that title, even though I might disagree with it. Uh, thank you. Yeah, this is great. Good stuff. Thanks for listening, folks. Make sure to check out our sponsors. As we mentioned in the episode, hunterdouglas.com slash SBS and rate tracker from sky-sale.com slash rate tracker. Of course, you can find all that at businessshow.co and sign up in the newsletter. You'll get it right there. Keep living that charmed life. See you next week. <laughs>